Greetings friends, welcome to Let's Make a Tower Defense Part 4 and this is really the part we've all been waiting for, isn't it? We're going to start making our actual towers. Wood, 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 wood. So the first tower that we're going to make is the arrow tower. For this one I like to think of like, you know, the, the towers they have on castles, those sort of grey, like made of brick ones. That's the kind of thing I think of when I, when I think of an arrow tower. So you're going to choose a cylinder, we're going to sculpt this. You can really make this as cool as you want. I'm just going to make a simple sort of a thing. So I'm going to stamp this down. Then I'm going to go to tools, stretch, make a little bit taller. Um, so we've got just a just a very simple thing here. And the only the only real funky thing I'm going to add to this is so I've scoped back into it, and I think I will press triangle now to remove, change the color to black. And then it looks like, I'm going to press L1 and square quickly to make this a bit narrower so that we've got one of those kind of windows, those like narrow windows you'd see in a castle. And this will be where our arrows will fire from. So this really, <laughs> this really is not a fancy tower at all. It's literally just a cylinder with a nice hole in it on the side there. I'm going to place it here for now just to get, get a sense of what's going on. So this is going to be our arrow tower just to remind ourselves. And so we're going to put a microchip on it. And in this microchip we can say arrow whoops, arrow logic. The arrow tower um, will shoot guys as they come past in this region but the tower itself isn't going to move. We're going to do a cannon tower and the cannon tower is going to like point at enemies as they walk by as they walk by and then shoot at them as well. But the arrow tower is going to stay where it is, but it's going to be launching arrows wherever the enemies are. And we can't actually do it with just this tower alone. What we need to have is what I call an arrow shooter. The arrow shooter is a floating sphere right in front of the arrow tower. You can have it about here make it kind of small and this is going to be invisible we're not going to make it invisible just yet but um, we're going to make it invisible at one point point. and what this is going to do we're going to go to gadgets put another microchip down what this is going to do is this is going to be the thing that the, ar the arrows actually are fired out of so I'm going to call this arrow shooter alrighty so now I think the next thing we, we're going to do, we've got, our, we've got our arrow tower, we've got our arrow shooter. We're also going to group these, so we can go like this, we can say group. Ta-da! Now they are, they are together, they are one. The next thing we're going to do is to make ourselves an arrow, actually. I think that'll be pretty good. Once again, nothing too fancy. We'll get a cylinder. I feel like arrows are brown, you know what I mean? This is a very creative, uh, very creative episode. I'm going to stamp that down, uh, tools, and then stretch. And you can make it about that long. Don't worry about the size, because you can just change the size after. And then I'm going to add a cone. I'm going to make it, let's say, silver. And kind of just eyeball it so that it kind of goes a bit like this doesn't have to be perfect. We're just figuring out the basics of it. Okay, we'll align it ever so slightly more to the center. Yeah, that's good enough, I say. Then we can make this a lot smaller. Whoa. And there we have a very simple arrow. A simple arrow tower and a simple arrow shooter. Now let's see if we can get everything to work. Let us begin with the arrow. So what we're going to do to the arrow is add a good old-fashioned microchip onto it. So let's go here, microchip, we can make it pretty small. Make sure you press L1 to surface snap it onto the arrow. Then we're going to say arrow logic. Naming stuff is always good practice. Alrighty. Then we're going to go into arrow logic, we've got it, and that's looking good. Then we're going to go into gadgets once again, movers and outputs. And we're going to stick down a rocket rotator. The rocket rotator will give you a little arrow, which we can see over here. 
and we want to make it so that it's pointing the direction at the arrow is because what the rocket rotator does is it makes it just like with our little dudes who were walking before it makes it point in the direction it's moving and so what this arrow does is it shows you where the front is so we want the arrow to be f firing so that the arrow head is in front and not sort of sideways or at a weird angle so that's why we arrange it like this alrighty next thing we're going to add to the arrow is once again another gadget we're going to go to sensors and input and we're going to choose an impact sensor when it impacts with something it's going to do something and it's not what you think it's actually going to disappear so when it touches something we're going to make touch when it touches something it'll get destroyed the other thing it's going to do is so for that we're going to get a health modifier also in movies and output and the health modifier is going to be per hit its modifier type is going to be impact so in other words when it hits something cha -cha -cha -cha, it's going to deal a certain amount of damage we can change this uh we can change this at, an, at another point and make it all balanced and so on but for now let's make it uh let's make it 25 minus 25. remember to make it a negative number if you make it a positive number it's going to heal if it's a negative number it deals damage and when it's currently modifying it's also going to get destroyed so if the arrow hits someone or deals damage to someone it's going to disappear da, 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 which is what we want alrighty that's the arrow next thing we're going to look at is the arrow shooter so for the arrow shooter we're going to go into its microchip and then we're going to add down we're going to add once again we're going to go into gadgets we're going to choose a look at rotator do, 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 do. you can put that wherever let's modify the look at rotator so that just like with similar to a rocket rotator that this is the front alrighty that's looking very cool we're going to look for a tag hmm so we don't really have any tags at the moment hmm so we'll leave those for now here we have our arrow shooter when it's when it spots something which we haven't actually determined yet hmm that's not going to work for us what we want to do is to go to our puppet and give it a tag so our, our tower knows what it's shooting at okay but we can't see our puppet because he's been emitted but if we remember from the last video if we go show and hide and then we untick preview invisibility we can see our puppet so let's go into them into their logic and all we have to do is stamp down a nice tag and you can put it in the logic itself or let's what we shall do instead is actually stamp it on the puppet themselves on their physical body make sure to press l1 to surface snap and for this we can say baddie baddies so now we have something that our arrow tower can actually look for so let's go back to our arrow shooter into our look at rotator and we're going to go look for tag baddie so they're going to look at the baddie then when they see the baddie we're going to go movies and outputs we're going to go emitter when the target is found it's going to power the emitter the emitter is going to shoot something which of course will be the arrow Cha-ching. but actually before we do that we're going to make the arrow part of the arrow tower group so now if we move this around or we have multiple we can actually also put this in other dreams as well but yeah make sure when you have the object to emit you actually scope into the group so you're only shooting the arrow and you aren't shooting the whole arrow tower itself then we're going to move our white bauble over here whoopsie close it by accident we're going to move our white bauble over here we can move this this little canvas out of the way we're going to move it in such a way you can press l2 as well to change the the direction that the arrow comes out at you can make it a little bit downwards because it's going to be shooting at them and then you can say shui shui. so uh, actually let's make it forwards because our look at rotator is going to be looking at the enemy the baddies if you will and then it will shoot the arrow out so we wanted it to be fairly straightforward and when I say straightforward, I mean literally straightforward. 
Alrighty, for the emit speed, we can set that to something like 15, which is pretty fast. You can make it even faster if you like, but that's 17 even. That'll, that'll be really fast. For the time between emits, you can make that something like 0.4, 0.3. That's really fast. 0.1, of course, is crazy fast, but yeah, we can experiment with that. Max emitted at once, we can leave that as infinite. You can also say for the emitted object lifetime, you can make that, let's say, 0.3 seconds. So it's going to shoot an arrow. 0.3 also means that the initial arrow is going to disappear before the next one is shot. And because it's traveling at 17 meters per second, in 0.3 seconds, it'll be able to travel, well, times 17 meters per second times 30%. It'll be able to travel... Yo, that maths is that maths is a bit bev above me at the moment. What I'll be able to do in this video, but it'll be able to travel a short distance, and then it'll disappear because we don't want the thing traveling the whole 17 meters because enemies aren't that far away. So yeah, that's just a little bit of the thinking behind what's going on here, but that's all good. So when it sees an enemy, it is going to then emit an arrow, and that's totally cool. That's what we want it to be doing. So at the moment, it looks like our arrow shooter and our arrow are working just fine. One other thing that we're going to do is uh, look at our actual our actual arrow tower itself. Also, just by the way, you can add like a timeline here if you want like a sound effect. And there is actually quite a nice sound effect. Let me go into modes and then sound mode. All right, search sound effects. I think it's called swing a punch. Swing, swing. Swing a punch. Ah, here we are. Alrighty, let's just move along here. This is a pretty good one. So, when the arrow is fired, it's gonna go, and it's gonna, it's gonna play that swing a punch sound. Alrighty. But we also want our arrows to only be fired when an enemy is in a certain area, and for that, we're gonna go to the arrow logic. This is the arrow tower logic. Sorry, I should rename this actually. So we've got the arrow tower logic. Whoopsie. Arrow tower. Arrow tower logic, arrow shooter, and then the arrow itself. So in our arrow tower logic, we're going to just have a very simple, we'll leave, we'll leave that mode. We'll have a very simple, we're going to gadgets, centers and input, a nice trigger zone. And the trigger zone, which is probably the, probably the easiest thing we'll do all day, we'll get a nice cube. Arrange it so that it's when enemies are in this kind of an area. We can make it we can make it decently big. We can also go to the sides like this. It really depends how powerful and how far range you want this tower to be. Do you want your arrow tower to be like a long range tower, short range tower, so on and so forth? Another important change is things to detect. We're gonna go tag, and of course the name to detect is baddie. And what is gonna happen when this is detected? Well, it's going to give power to our arrow shooter. And then it's going to be looking at them and then shooting things at them and yeah. Alrighty, so that is our arrow tower. Let's have a look if it works. Here come our enemies. They're on their way. Oh, wow, he's shooting. Okay, so they are being shot, but they're... At the moment, it looks like they're being shot at a rather weird angle. So that's not too great. I think what we will do, because also another thing when, when making towers, is that there's a heck of a lot of bug fixing that goes into it. So we're going to reduce this, and we're going to reduce this, so that the enemies have to be actually pretty close to be shot. Another very important change we're going to make is, not in our tower at all, but in fact, in the move speed of our good old friend here. And now you'll be thanking me that we, in earlier videos, when we have our root logic, that we had a variable slider. Because now if we want to slow their speed, we can just go like this. We can make it one meter, 1.5 meters. And if we go into the follower uh, logic, we can see that it's here. Well, it's not actually one, point five. Well. I'm not sure why that's why that's not the same, but <laughs> it's fine. At the moment, they are moving a bit slower. Uri, you can close that now. 
Let's have a look. Okay, they're moving much slower now. Let us see what happens with these dudes. Even though they aren't moving at the exact speed that I said they were, they are at least moving slower. Alrighty. Ah, look, one of those dudes died. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. So this tower is actually working. Cha-chang. If we want to, if you don't believe me, what we can do is actually make the arrow itself. We can change the damage that it deals, and we can actually make it do 100. Remember, minus 100. Minus 100 uh, damage or health. Let's see what happens now. Now that we've made our made our arrow tower a lot more uh, deal a lot more damage, you'll see how devastating this this tower can be. Here they come! What? Cha cha! Oh, there goes one. There goes another. Oh oh! And it's quite cool because if the, if the arrow actually misses, then it's not going to actually deal damage to them. So it's quite a quite an accurate tower as well. So that's really cool. Alrighty, friends. That is the gist of making an arrow tower. If you want to adjust things like the damage, you just go into the arrow. You can make it a lot less. You can make it something like... Let's go back to minus 25. That's a pretty good one. One last thing we're going to change is, of course, to make our arrow shooter. We're going to go into its physical properties. Make sure to scope into the arrow shooter specifically and not the whole tower, the whole sculpture, but just the arrow shooter this ball over here and you're going to make it you're going to untick visible so if we go and we make our show hide we have preview invisibility and we have it ticked let's see what happens we've got our lone tower the defender of the poor innocent chick look at it here they come the enemies oh good heavens i haven't actually um i've reduced the damage so it probably won't be able to stop all of them but that's why we'll make other towers. But let me shut up and let's see what's happening. Cha, cha, cha. So it looks like it's being fired from within the actual tower. You can actually move the arrow shooter to make it um, appear uh, uh, like you can move it a little bit closer in so that it looks like it's coming from inside there. But really, yeah, friends, that's the basics of making an arrow tower. But the last few things I'm going to change are we're going to scope into our tower and we're also going to go turn preview visibility off. We can move this a little bit so it's maybe a little bit closer. So it looks like the arrows are coming out of this, coming out of this little window that we've got. That'll be quite. That'll be quite good. And of course, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but the sound isn't quite working with our arrow shooter. It's kind of just playing once and then not happening again. So what we're going to do for that is to go to animate and then choose a nice timeline we can put our swinger punch in here do, 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 do. reduce this a heck of a lot because it'll really be just that sound we can delete that connection there and we can <laughs> we can make it so that when the target is found not when the targets found you see that was my mistake We'll go into the emitter and we'll say object just emitted. Because what it was doing, I actually messed up some logic there. Because what it was doing was when enemies were being found, it was making that sound. But now we want it so that when the arrow is shot, it's making the sound of the arrow flying. This sound over here. So let's see if it works a bit better this time. And actually, you know what? You know what? At the end of the day, at the end of the day... Let's make this a killer tower. You know, what's it going to do? What's it going to do to us if we make this a killer tower? No one is here to no one is here to be hurt by our balancing just yet. So let's see how this tower works. Let's get a nice view. So from up here, turn off preview invisibility. Dum, 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 dum. When they eventually get here, dum, 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 Alrighty. Alrighty, they're in for it. They're in for it now. Yo. Yo. 
murderous absolutely murderous well friends thank you that is it from me this is an arrow tower in our next video we're going to be looking at a cannon tower uh, which is going to work uh, a little bit differently um, but together hopefully they'll be able to save our nice little chick from all these enemies and we'll be able to make a pretty awesome town defense awesome thank you friends i'll catch you for the next one catch you on the flip-flop peace out mm -hmm.